Well, glad you make it. Good to have you back. Thank you. Uh, and to uh, discuss your successes and, uh, and some of your failures. But um, the, uh, as I was telling you off camera, a lot of the guys are getting a lot of deals done, uh, even with high interest rates. Uh, but the, uh, they still have the dream or the aspiration. Uh, it's not totally unfounded that they want to do uh, elephants and dinosaurs, the bigger deals. Which are possible, and so uh, when you when you went out and uh, you know your 800 plus days is more or less legendary now, um, the um, but you kept at it. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, you said you had made uh, six or seven previous yep. presentations. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that you told your wife, well, at least I'm going to know how to uh, uh, do a first class presentation. That's right. And um, and and you got it done. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So, uh, you know, I, as you know, I graduated from Hardcore in 2019, flew back, and on January the 1st, 2020, began the whole process, and uh, then COVID hit. And I remember listening to you about how COVID was a great opportunity, right? And I chased the market in um, healthcare, professional healthcare services, health and wellness services in the federal government. There's a lot of need for that. And uh, as COVID got worse and worse, that became a better and better market to go after. Uh, but I also kept my options open and kept looking for opportunities throughout the United States to buy one of these small federal government contractors. Uh, and it was one LOI, one offer after another, get this close and then people back away. Kept that up for uh, two years, nonstop. And I, my, as you mentioned, I remember one day I came down and I was getting frustrated. My wife always told me Friday afternoons are the worst because my, my offers would expire on a Friday. And I'd come down and I'd go, they backed out. Um, and, and you just have to keep punching. You just have to keep hitting. You just have to keep getting back at it. And I remember telling her, I think it was on the seventh one, I said, you know what? I don't know if a deal is ever going to happen. But one thing's for sure, I got this process down. I understand how to talk to people. And I'm not backing away from my strategy. I didn't back away from my low price strategy, my low offer strategy. And the next one, I got it. That low offer strategy we call the embarrassing offer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're dog dirt. You yeah. All the way down to the bottom, as low as you can. Yeah. And uh, I understand that. It's tough to get the kids to understand it because that rejection uh, repeated, uh, is, it can be devastating. And it depends on how much uh, personal baggage they have, which is all, almost always uh, uh, negative. Um, but you, you, you persevere. As I mentioned before we got on camera, uh, there's a, a very successful lawyer that has made 26 uh, offers, had 26 LOIs, and he hasn't done a deal yet. He was at the last hardcore. Um, in the, um, and you just have to keep swinging. You got to keep going. You can't stop. Yeah. You can't stop. Once you commit to this, I mean, you're committing to a lifetime of potential wealth. So why would you stop at any point? Right? So you just got to keep digging. You got to keep moving forward. I never gave up through this process. Well, and, and that's what it takes. Uh, and I, I, I tell people that uh, for 10 years, almost to the day, uh, I was committed 100% uh, of my time. And, uh, the, uh, and then a week or two before the 10 years was up, uh, I had uh, achieved interimly, on an interim basis, what I, I wanted to do. Um, but I mean, you, you can't count the hours of the days of the week, so otherwise you'll you get so frustrated to say, what, what the fuck am I doing here? Um, but, um, and some of the kids, um, uh, that's a lack of maturity. Uh, some of the uh, kids, and I, of course, you know I call you all kids, because I'm either old enough to be your father or grandfather. Uh, some of the kids, it's because they really weren't that hungry to begin with, okay? Um, and uh, and uh, we're gonna see a slide in the next couple of days where a guy that came through here about six months ago was really had a, a lot of uh, potential, but man's greatest burden is unfulfilled potential. And uh, he's currently going through um, a divorce. And uh, he, his partner, he, they're suing for dissolution of their partnership. And uh, he, it slowed him down. You know, it slowed him down. He says, being in court two or three times a week, once for your divorce and once for your uh, dissolution of a partnership, can, uh, lends itself 
quite easily to take your eye off the ball. But, you know, I keep saying those who get laser beam focused first, stay laser beam focused longest, will win the most in the end. But sometimes that takes a long time. So now you can appreciate, uh, not having been that long, our 12 and 13 year scenarios where these guys, two rocket science guys, one filthy rich, which he wasn't that, you know, motivated in my opinion. He says he was, but I mean, when you're already filthy rich, it's, uh, it's hard to, to, to put in those long hours. Uh, but they, they finally uh, did their deals in 12 and thir uh, 13 years respectively. Uh, when you, when you, I know you uh, focus in on um, uh, contracts, okay? Federal government. Yeah. Federal government contracts. Um, did you uh, utilize or did you need a joint venture partner that had the expertise? So I didn't require a joint venture partner for buying the companies. What I wanted to do was relieve myself from having to manage these companies. So I reached back into my own network, a uh, person that I've known for 30 years, uh, and brought him on board with me so that he could manage the companies. And that was the right decision because hunting down these companies and closing these deals can, uh, can be all time consuming. Absolutely. So you need somebody that's operationally efficient and capable. So we brought in a CFO, we brought in a chief human resources officer, we brought in a president, uh, brought in a whole management team to make it happen. And, and where are they located now? They're, everybody's in Washington, DC, just outside in Northern Virginia. Okay, and that's where you're from anyway. Uh, yeah, that's where I've been for the last 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the story of your neighbor. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it's funny how certain things stick with you. Yeah. yeah. So the federal contracts, now your contract isn't one of those 10 million a day that goes posted up on the uh, federal website, you know, how contracts come out every day? So yeah, there's a lot of competitive contracts that are out there. Um, and so, yeah, we do go after some of those. Um, we are, we've got three companies right now that we've purchased and each one of them has its own market that it goes after within the federal government of the United States. The one that's the hottest one is going to be the cybersecurity. Um, the second company that we bought was a cybersecurity company. And that is a very, very high demand, very hot market. Yeah. Well, cybersecurity, uh, and within cybersecurity, Artificial intelligence, which is a big play, is hot as anything. That's the big one. It's yeah, ML yeah. and AI. Yeah, yeah. And the, uh, uh, so what was the, how did you find the, the, the almost all of these are bids, right? What, the contracts yeah. or the companies? The, the companies. All, so the companies were um, actually, so this is interesting. So I made about four or 5,000 phone calls over the last two years, 15 to 20,000 emails. Not very good with the emails, good with the phone calls, was able to make a lot of contacts and connections. Uh, the first deal came through my bank. It was a failed deal. The buyer couldn't close the deal. I get a phone call the next day. I offered $2 million lower than what the deal was, and it, I got it. Um, so that was pretty interesting. Didn't have to use a broker on that one. Um, it was a very good, very good margins, really good margins within that company. Uh, able to finance, get everything done very, very quickly. And then the second one, I had bid on that one through a very small broker. There's a broker that represents some of these small companies. Um, and uh, we had bid six months prior. Somebody else had a higher bid because we go in low. That buyer failed to close the deal. I get a phone call the afternoon of the failure, the day before the, the supposed close, and went back in at my price. So it's nice to be the, uh, it's okay to be the second guy. Now, if I, if I, if I remember correctly, um, you uh, almost totally, on the first two deals, was uh, bank finance. Yeah, yeah. 100% cash at close. The bank was able to finance 100% of the cash at close and then seller notes. The second one was 100% of the deal was cash at close, no seller notes. Um, and the bank financed the whole thing. Of course, it's a government contract. It's government contracts, yeah. right? It's assured money. It's probably the safest bet around. It's probably better than real estate right now. Yeah, and uh, when I did my first contract, the government, it was uh, uh, 20 million, and the second contract was 20 million. And then uh, my banker called me, a guy named Mark, and he says, Mr. Pena, the money's still coming in from the contract. He told me they were done. So I called, blah, blah, and they gave me a 10, they, they gave me a $10 million contract because they knew I could perform. And so, that's my 50 million in contract. 
it, it's, uh, and the banks, although they, we didn't get paid, we got paid always, but it didn't always come on time. The government, you know, in its infinite wisdom, could screw it up and make it late. Uh, when I was living in hand to mouth then, when it was late, two days, that was a big problem. So, um, but they always pay. And uh, to this day, I mean, uh, you'll be able to stand uh, on those uh, deals vis-a-vis um, -vis your track record and reputation for, not forever, but for a long, long time. Yeah, and the other trick is to build up the pipeline of new sales, right? So that's what we've been focusing on over the last year is to get that pipeline of brand new sales, looking for those new contracts. You want to extend what you have, right? There's always a recompete that you can go after, but then there's new business that you can go after within those same markets. And so that's what we've been really focusing on. How long are the contracts for? Typically, contracts are for five years. That's so terrific. it's one base year plus four option years. In some of the contracts that we bought, we're in the first year. Some of them That's were sweet. in this third year, right? Um, and so, you know, now that we have very good customer intimacy uh, on the ones that we're in the latter years on, because we've developed that great customer intimacy, not only are they adding money, but they're starting to hint that, hey, you know what? We'd really like you guys to recompete on this. We think you're well positioned to win the next award for five years. And, and, and what is the primary reason that uh, the first and second sold? The first and second, it's always somebody that needs to get out. So I only ever look, as you've taught me, to look for somebody that absolutely has to get out. So, um, you know, we look for, nobody ever tells you why they want to get out. You have to figure it out. It's a yeah, piece yeah. of information. And usually it's a health problem or it's an aging out problem or there's some type of crisis within yeah. the person who's selling. I don't like a crisis in the business. I don't mind doing a fix me upper, but I prefer to have a crisis within the Correct. seller because that means that they have to sell. And I've got to tell you, the two deals that I did close earlier on in the, in the first year, both of them were the second time that it had failed. And so you've got a very upset seller on the other side. Motivated. They're willing to take less. They want to get out. Mm -hmm. So that's who you have to find. Um, when I, was, when I did, did this you know, back in, in the 80s, uh, I, I never met anybody that uh, was concerned enough to get out of their business because their wife got ill. I never met that. I never met one in person. Uh, but a, a lot of guys uh, will, you know, I'm going to spend the few years we have left together together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I thought that was a myth. I didn't believe that. No, it's true. Yeah, well, That's I know. Exactly I, I now know it's true. Oh, it's exactly what's yeah. going on. 